If you're looking to make a really easy breathing or pulse animation that works for 3D objects in your Unity game, you should continue watching this tutorial. Greetings, it's Maxo Diddly. Let's get right into how we can animate this owl using a pulse script. So I've got a 3D object made by a friend of mine. It's a really good pixel art owl and it has a bunch of child objects. To show that this will work if you have a model that's just one object or a model that has many child objects. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click and click on create and then create a C sharp script in our assets folder and call it pulse. Once you've created the script, open it up. So firstly, we need to do these five serialized variables. So we're going to do serialized field game object target object. And this is going to be the game object that we want to animate. And then we need to do serialized field float expand duration and then equal to one F. So basically this is how long our expand and contract animation, which is our pulse animation is going to take. And we can also customize this in the editor. And then we have two vectors called breathe in and breathe out. So what's going to be the scale size of our object when we've breathed in and what's going to be the scale size when we breathe out. And this Boolean here is just a toggle for if you want to turn on or off the pulse animation. After that, we're going to make two private variables, private float current time equals zero and private bool breathing in equals true. So current time is a float to keep track of the time elapsed for the current pulse. And breathing in is a boolean to determine if the object is currently expanding, which would be true, or contracting, which would be false. You can delete the start function and in the update function, I just want you to call a function called pulse update. And we're going to make this in a second. So I want you to do this for the pulse update. So do private void pulse update and then if pulse in and then have nothing in here. So basically we're going to be doing our pulse code in the update function and we only want to execute it if we are currently pulsing. Next we're going to do vector three target scale equals breathing in question mark breathe out colon breathe out and vector three start scale equals breathing in question mark breathe out colon breathe in. So these lines use a ternary conditional operator, which is the question mark, to assign values based on the breathing in boolean. Target scale is assigned breathe in if breathing in is true, otherwise it's assigned breathe out, and start scale is assigned breathe out if breathing in is true, otherwise it's assigned to breathing in vector. This means if the object is currently breathing in, it will transition from breathe out to breathe in, and if it's breathing out, it will transition from breathe in to breathe out to create a good pulse or breathing effect. After that, we're going to do current time plus equals time.delta time. And we're just going to increment current time by time.delta time. And time.delta time represents the time that has passed since the last frame, ensuring smooth and frame rate independent updates. And then we can do float loop factor equals current time divided by expand duration. Loop factor is calculated as a ratio of current time to expand duration, and this factor ranges from 0 to 1, representing the progress of the transition from the start scale to the target scale. Then we can do target object.transform.local scale equals vector3.lerp start scale, target scale, and lerp factor. So this just linearly interpolates between start scale and target scale based on the lerp factor. So when lerp factor is 0, the scale is exactly start scale. And when loop factor is one, the scale is exactly target scale. And loop is just a way to smoothly go between two vector threes. And then what we need to do is we need to do if loop factor is greater than or equal to one, breathing in equals not breathing in, and then current time equals zero F. So we're going to check if the loop factor is greater than one. If it's greater than or equal to one, that means the transition is complete. So we need to basically toggle breathing in to equal not breathing in. And this is a very quick way to switch a boolean from true to false or false to true. And then we need to set current time to zero because we're about to do a different animation. So we need to set the current time to zero so we can accurately time our next animation up to one second and then swap again and so on. And that's all the codes we're going to do. So save your work and go back into Unity. Now drag and drop your pulse script onto the object you want to animate. Then drag and drop the object into the target object field and by the way your model can be just one model with one object or with the case of this cell that my friend made there's a lot of child objects that are all going to animate properly. 
and you'll see in a moment. Then we need to put in some variables for the breathe in and breathe out. So both Z's we're going to set to 1 for now, and set the X for breathe in to be 0.98, and the Y to be 1.02. And then do the opposite for breathe out. So do 1.02 for the X, and 0.98 for the Y. And make sure you tick pulse in to enable it. Then we hit play. And as you can see, it's doing a nice little effect. We'll set the Z to be something like minus 4, so we can see it close up. And as you can see, it's doing a nice pulse. And if we look at it in the scene view, it's doing a nice little animation. And there's a bunch of stuff you can customize on the fly. So we could set the expand duration to be 0.1. And as you can see, he's very active. It's a very active L. Maybe he's on something. But if we set it to 2, he's tired. Maybe he's injured from battle. So you can change this dynamically. And maybe we want to change the scales dynamically. Look, he's a much uh, hev he's a heavier breather now. But now let's put it back to what we had before and introduce the z-axis. Now, since we've included the z-axis, you can see he's now expanded as well on the z-axis. But you can customize this as you see fit. So thanks for being a great audience. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. And subscribe for more tutorials. Thanks for watching.